Hello and welcome to the Friday, January 20th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, and today I took another look at SPF and DMARC records, and this time uh, Jan focused on the top 100,000 domains to see how well DMARC, SPF, and these other technologies are implemented. Well, it uh, turns out, uh, not a big surprise here, but the popular the domain, the more likely it does have... Uh, useful uh, records uh, installed here, but still even for the top 1000 of uh, these domains, there are still a lot of gaps left. One problem that you may be seeing here uh, with these very popular domains is that they're often associated with very large organizations. And the larger an organization, the more difficult it tends to be to limit what mail servers are allowed to send email. And that, of course, is what these SPF and DMARC records are typically all about. And remember... December patch Tuesday long, long time ago, but Microsoft announced a vulnerability in Sysmon. And uh, this was certainly an interesting vulnerability as Sysmon is often used sort of to instrument the network to detect uh, security issues. But in this case, due to this vulnerability, Sysmon could be sort of turned against you. Now, thanks to Jay for uh, pointing out that uh, exploit has been released for this vulnerability. The exploit comes courtesy of uh, the individual who actually found uh, this particular vulnerability, reported it uh, to Microsoft back in June last year. And uh, with this exploit being available now, well, uh, patching is a must for uh, this uh, vulnerability. The patch actually was released in the form of a new version of Sysmon end of November of last year, so ahead of the patch Tuesday that actually announced the existence of this vulnerability. And we also now have an exploit available for a manage engine vulnerability that was patched last week. This is CVE 2022-47966. Manage Engine uh, had a number of vulnerabilities. It's almost difficult uh, to tell them all apart, but this is the new latest one. And yes, there is an exploit available. It's essentially a SAML authentication vulnerability that does allow authentication uh, bypass. The write-up comes from Horizon 3, who has done good sort of technical deep dives on a number of other vulnerabilities uh, before. And uh, one of the reasons for the vulnerability they state here is the use of an outdated version of Apache Santuario. So uh, that's uh, the particular library here being used, the tool being used for the XML signature uh, validation. Maybe worthwhile to sort of dig around your network if you are using any outdated versions of this particular product in any other systems, not necessarily just manage engine. And in case if you're using Netcom routers, double check if your model is vulnerable to the latest vulnerabilities, CVE 2022, 4873 and 4874. These vulnerabilities, an authentication bypass and then a buffer overflow vulnerability can be chained together in order to gain full access to the device without authentication. And a proof of concept exploit has already been released to GitHub. Patches are available from Netcom, so why not make this router firmware check Friday and uh, double check if your router, whether it's Netcom or not, is up to date. And apparently Microsoft is concerned enough about how many people are still using old versions of Office. And so Microsoft now, in order to get a better picture, has pushed a special update knowledge base for 0217511 that is used to essentially enumerate what 
Office version you are running. It's just a little script that will run once. It will not install anything. It will report back what Office version you're running. So I guess Microsoft can better figure out how to support these old versions. One of the tricky things here is that uh, this particular update uh, was not necessarily uh, kind of labeled as, as having this particular callback functionality. Well, thanks for listening. And don't forget all the great ways how you can listen to this podcast. I hear you can actually have Alexa wake you up with this podcast. Uh, not sure if that works. I don't use Alexa myself. Uh, would be nice to know if uh, anybody's actually uh, using that. Uh, but uh, thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.